Hi, I'm Tony and welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Shoei Neotech 2 helmet. It's their very popular flip front helmet that costs from £519.99 up to £599.99 depending on the colour and the graphic. <music> This is the second generation of Shoei's Neotech, which was their first helmet to use an internal sun visor. And this one has become just as popular as the first one. It's had a few refinements that are designed to make it a bit quieter and more aerodynamic on the move, which was some of the criticisms of the original Neotech. The shell is made from Shoei's Advanced Integrated Matrix, which is a mixture of lightweight fibers that are sandwiched between two layers of fiberglass. The idea of that, shall we say, is to give the right blend of elasticity and strength. They say it also brings down the weight. This helmet, we've weighed it at 1,718 grams, which would say it's possibly just a little bit above average for a flip front helmet, but it doesn't take it up into heavyweight territory. Those aerodynamic improvements, they are factored in by spoilers around the front of the chin and also at the back of the helmet here and then there are ventilation channels, one at that chin with a really simple to use rocker switch that can works even with the thickest of winter gloves and then a second one that's just as idiot friendly on the top, a slide for the vents to bring in air at the top and the helmet also is able to shed warm air from the inside through this exhaust vent at the back. Of all the customer reviews on Sports Bike Shop, that's one of the big things that comes through is that this helmet gives you a good amount of airflow while you're on the move. That's universally popular, the amount of air that this helmet brings into the inside. Another factor with the shell for the Neotech 2 is it comes in three sizes, which means you'll get a better relationship between the size of your head and the size of the helmet on the outside. The smaller shell covers sizes from extra, extra small up to medium. Large has a shell size all to itself and XL and XXL get their own shell size. One factor to bear in mind with the shell of the Shoei is that extra space has been created to accommodate the sun visor. Shoei refused to make helmets with sun visors that meant using a thinner EPS, that's the polystyrene liner that provides the impact protection. They wouldn't compromise on the thickness of that, so what they did was created extra space in here to accommodate that visor. As it slides up, it sits into this recess around the shell. So you know you're getting just the same amount of protective material in this helmet as you'll get in one of their helmets without an internal sun visor. The sun visor operates on a slide switch on the left hand side of the shell and it's also anti-fog coated so no issues with clear vision. Let's move on to the flip mechanism. It's a simple matter of squeezing that red button and lifting. Final step locks it, kind of semi locks it up into the raised position the reason for that is to stop it just flopping forward while you're riding. It takes a little bit of a push to get that chin bar back down again. The reason for that is this helmet is tested twice. It's tested under both the open face and the full face impact tests. So you can legally wear this with the chin bar up if you're riding a town and you're riding at lower speeds. Riding in a helmet like this with the chin bar up, the balance is thrown out by that and we would say it's not something really you'd want to do on a long term basis or on longer rides, particularly as the speed increases. Probably something that's more useful when you're scooting around at low speeds in town. Flip front helmets tend to be popular with tourers and commuting riders, and a Bluetooth intercom is really handy for them. These infills at the side, these V-shaped sections, have become a bit of a showy theme in recent years on a few of their helmets, and what that allows is an integrated SRL Senna system to be incorporated. It sits where that infill panel is on the V-shape, the battery is then incorporated in the back and then there are pockets inside the helmet for speakers to sit inside so you can remove foam sections from there and put the speakers in without them causing you any discomfort. That system's really popular and we'll put the link to that system in the description for this video. The main visor is protected by a Pinlock Evo Max Vision insert. So Max Vision means it's got the broadest field of vision that you can get from a Pinlock and the Evo means it's got the most moisture resistance of the levels of Pinlock. So there's the highest spec of Pinlock that you can get. The visor operates on this tab here. The final step locks it in place and just lifting it slightly allows a slight crack around the visor trim to allow in some airflow. 
There are a lot of riders who feel that this doesn't allow in enough air, which means they come up an extra step and then that gap is too big for them. They say that there's too much air and that you can get debris coming through the helmet. They would like an intermediate step between the two, but you can't have that. So that's one of the things that comes across a lot in those customer reviews, one of the few criticisms of the helmet, really. Moving to the inside of the helmet, in keeping with the touring and commuting line, the liner is much more touring friendly, much more suited to riding long distances. It's a comfortable kind of velour type cover to the foam. And the cheek pads, there are a variety of different thicknesses available. So if it's a bit too tight or a bit too slack around your cheeks, you're able to replace the cheek pads with thicker or thinner ones to suit your fit. It's fully removable, so it can be taken out for washing. The strap fastener is a micrometric buckle, but in keeping with this being showy, it's not just a normal micrometric buckle. The toothed slider that sits within there is made from stainless steel, so it's got a classier feel than your average micrometric buckle. The chin curtain comes as standard, the idea being that it keeps the ride a bit quieter and less drafty. And there's also provided in the box a breath guard that sits on top of the chin bar. So go looking for that before you ride off in the helmet. That's something that would be easily overlooked. The Neotech 2 has been around for about three years now and it's built up a really loyal following in that time. The average score from the 130 customer reviews that we've had so far on this helmet is 4.84, which is actually quite high. You might say, well, yeah, come on, that's a 520 pound helmet. Of course, it's gonna get high scores. Sometimes it doesn't work like that and people expect more of an expensive helmet. And if it doesn't meet up to those demands, they're a little bit more particular in the way they score things. So the fact this has got a, such a high rating suggests that it lives up to the price tag. Whether Shoei's intentions to make this a quieter helmet have worked or not is up for debate. Look through the customer reviews and you'll find people who say it's so quiet they don't need to wear earplugs, they've thrown them in the bin. You'll also find people who say that it's really noisy and they can't tolerate it. Noise is always a really subjective issue. It depends on the bike you ride, the way you ride it, how big your head is, the shape. There's so many things that it's really hard to say whether a helmet's quiet or noisy. But what I would say is that there are more people who feel this is a quiet helmet than feel it's a noisy helmet. I hope that's covered the Shoei Neotech 2 in every detail you could want. But if there's anything extra that you'd like to know, please pop a question in the comments below and we'll do our best to get back to you with an answer as soon as we can. Thanks for watching.